Have you guys ever searched something on Google and found results that look a little different? Maybe you're looking for recipes and you get this specific section where you get some star ratings, you get the number of reviews, how long it's gonna take to cook that specific recipe and more. Or maybe you've seen results on Google that have different types of star ratings, all these votes, and then also an FAQ attached to it. Or if you've looked for movies or events, you might have seen this type of result on Google. So all of these are rich results. And there's actually a whole series of them that we can take a look at in this article written by Google. So all these different type of rich results are results that we can be a part of, right? So if we have a book that we're selling, we can show different breadcrumbs, carousels, courses, data sets, events, it goes on and on and on. I'm gonna link this specific URL in the description so you guys can check that out. And if we wanna take part in these rich results and get our own rich results and rich snippets, we need to use structured data. So what is structured data? Structured data is a really small piece of code that we can add to our website that helps Google understand the content that we're looking at. Let me show you guys what this actually looks like and just bear with me. We are gonna take a look at some code, but I'm gonna break this down with you guys so you can understand exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about structured data. I'm gonna take this example, uh, NYC parking, and I'm gonna open up the page and I'm gonna go to the page source, okay? I'm just gonna command fschema.org. I'm gonna copy and paste a couple of things onto a Google Docs so we can see exactly what we're working with. I'm gonna take this right here. So I'm gonna paste that there. And then I'm also going to take another piece of schema, which is this one right here. So let's separate this a little bit. So we see that we have a piece of text that's talking about an aggregate rating. And so if we separate this out a little bit, we're gonna see that we have a specific rating value and a rating count. Okay, so if we actually go back to the search result, we see that we have this rating that's 4.8 and 146,000 votes. If we go back into this Google Doc, we're gonna see that what's actually present, so that little piece of code that we found right now is exactly what's coming up in the search results. So we have that 4.8 and 146 thousand rating counts or votes and then another thing that we have here is this faq so is parking suspended today in nyc and we're going to see if we separate this out a little bit as well so we have this question and then we have this answer so question uh, let me just make this bold so you guys can see it and then answer so the question is is parking suspended today in nyc and then the answer is the following right so this is exactly what's being brought up in that search result and this is something that we can play around with so this is exactly what structured data looks like it's just a little piece of code and if we break it down like we just did it's not as scary as it might seem but guys why do we need to add this type of structured data i thought search engines were smart smart enough to understand what we were talking about. So even though search engines have been getting smarter over the years, they still can't read blog posts and view images and understand things as easily as we can from a quick glance. So by using structured data, we provide an additional level of support to help Google understand what we're talking about just a little bit better. I'm gonna give you guys an example later that's gonna really help you visualize this concept. But on to the next thing, guys. How do we add this to our website and what do we even add to our website? So this is where we go to schema.org. This is an initiative that was started by Google, by Bing, and by Yahoo to basically dictate how we add structured data and what that language is gonna look like, what that markup looks like. So if we actually go to schema.org, this is where we're gonna find everything relating to structured data data, right? So if you click on the docs, what we're interested in here is the schemas. And here we can jump directly into, we can check out a book, maybe a movie, and we're going to use the recipe example later. So this is going to tell us exactly what we need to provide to have that structured data for the specific type of schema or type of property that we're looking at. So if we wanna have a structured data for a book, then this is exactly what we need to provide. So for now, all we need to do is just take a look at this section right here, where it says properties from book. Anything under that right now isn't super relevant. These are all the things that we can add to that structured data for that book, right? So we have book edition, so edition of the book, the format, the illustrator, the ISBN if we'd like, and the number of pages. Once we have that set up on our website, that's then 
gonna come up in the search engine's result page. Another example, let's take a look at movie. So properties from movie. Again, we only need to check it out until all the way down here. And these are all the things that we can talk about for that structured data from movie. So an actor, it's telling us exactly what it is. So actors can be associated with individual items in a series, uh, the country of origin, the director, duration, music by, all these other things. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at this example. So properties from recipe, right? So we have the cooking time, cooking method, nutrition, category, cuisine. And again, we have the description on the right if we're not exactly sure what we need to provide. We also have a separate property of a how-to. This is also applicable, not just to recipes, but basically to anything where you're teaching someone how to do that specific thing. And then we have another subset of properties for that type of schema. Now, I know this might look scary, guys, but if we break it down piece by piece, it actually isn't as scary as it seems. We're just providing that little bit of extra data just to help Google understand exactly what we're talking about. But the question is, how do we actually add this to our website. So directly on schema.org, it'll give us three different ways that we can add that to our website. So if we scroll all the way down to any of the schema types, we're gonna have different examples and how they're gonna look like in different markups. And markups are just different ways of providing that data. We don't have to worry about that too much. So we see down here, so we're, we're looking at an example of a recipe and we see that the example we're looking at now, it says no markup, right? So this is just plain old HTML without any markup. Okay, so we have world famous banana bread, there's an image, it's by John Smith. This is the prep time, the cook time, the yield, so on and so forth. So this is the example that I was talking about, guys. Right now, if Google were to see this specific page, they would read that text and they would understand it to a certain extent. When we set up the structured data and we tell it exactly what each piece of this recipe is, it's gonna understand that this is a recipe a lot better. So there's three different ways, three different markups that we could use to present that structured data. We have microdata, RDFA, and JSON LD. If we actually check out one of Google's documents about understanding how structured data works, and we scroll all the way down, we're gonna see that JSON LD is actually the recommended markup, the recommended way that we wanna present structured data on our website. So again, let's go back to that recipe. We wanna take a look at JSON dash LD. And this is exactly what we saw in that previous example of the parking example where we saw the aggregate rating and the FAQs. This is how it was set up. So now we're breaking down that recipe and we have all these different layers of properties of that specific recipe and Google can understand this a lot better. So we know that the type of schema is a recipe, the author is John Smith, the cook time, the date published, the description, and the ingredients, right? So now Google understands that this is specifically talking about an ingredient and it's in the structure that they can read and they can understand a lot better. So even though this might sound really complicated and really technical, it's really important to understand why we use schema and how we add it to our website. So if you have a technical team, definitely talk to them about it. But if you're using something like a WordPress, there's actually quite a few things we can do to add structured data to to our website. So let me show you guys a couple examples here. If you go into the WordPress plugin marketplace and you type in structured data, there's gonna be a variety of plugins that are gonna help you get structured data on your WordPress website. The interesting thing about these plugins is that sometimes these plugins are specifically built for one type of schema, right? So this one right here, it's built specifically for reviews, right? And then we have another one down here that's built specifically for events. And then you're gonna have other ones that are all around structured data schema builders, right? And so it's important to scroll down and just check out all the different types of schema that are supported, right? So we see article, book, course, how to, so on and so forth. So these are really interesting to look at and they can really help you add that structured data to your website. I actually wanna show you guys an example because I ended up buying, for this specific website, I ended up buying a plugin that would help me out specifically for structured data relating to recipes. And so if we actually, I wanna show you guys exactly how this works. If we click on edit recipe, this is exactly what that's gonna look like and what some of these plugins are gonna look like, right? So we're gonna have all these different fields 
that we're gonna have to fill in. So the name, the summary, the author, the servings, the prep time, all the stuff, the categories, any equipment we wanna add, ingredients, instructions, so on and so forth. So once we filled all this in, this is what that recipe is gonna look like. It's gonna come out like a rich result with all the right things in all the right places. So rich results are definitely really cool, but the step after rich results is getting featured snippets. So if you're interested in that, click on this video. That's how you completely take over keywords and destroy your competitors. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.